uh, life emerged about uh, 3.8 to 4 billion years ago. We eukaryotes, so eukaryotes includes us, plants, basically every organism we can see with the naked eye. We emerged only 1.6 to 2 billion years ago. There was more than 2 billion years on Earth where these organisms, microorganisms, were the only ones there. They're the ones that really made the environment around us, and we haven't been able to understand them. In biology, when students come to the classroom, we teach them what the cell looks like. So a bacterial cell, archaeal cell, it's just a big bag with DNA and protein inside it. Then we look at a eukaryote cell, so our cells, like an animal cell. And then we see all of a sudden all this complexity, like the nucleus, endoplasmic reticulum, et cetera. And then we show them a plant cell, and it has a chloroplast to help them photosynthesize. And then we teach them what, uh, so how organisms live. They have DNA, RNA, protein, so transcription and translation. We need to teach them why. Why do organisms have DNA, RNA, and protein? Why do organisms like bacteria have simple cells? Why do our cells have complex structures? Even starting to ask the question, why do we have the, a heart, a vascular system, lungs? We teach students that we have them. We don't really teach them why. Why does an organism as simple as a bacterium not have this? Or a yeast cell, which is also eukaryote, so the same group of life as us, they're a single-celled organism. They don't have a heart. They don't have lungs. A plant is actually quite closely related to us in the context of all life, but we look so different. Why are we different? Why are we the same? Biology, uh, so after we teach those kind of um, things like the cell structure, DNA, RNA, protein. We also teach them what the differences are between organisms. Plants, they photosynthesize. We humans, animals, we breathe and eat things. We teach that way because biology has been based on observation with our naked eyes. We try to look for differences. That's what us humans are good at doing, finding differences. But we're also actually very good at finding patterns, finding cons consistencies. But that has been difficult for biology because we couldn't extract much, from, much information from trees or animals besides how they looked before. But now we have information from their DNA, from their genes. We can start to answer much, much deeper questions. As sequencing technology has become more and more available uh, in research, we are able to look at biology from a completely different perspective. And the DNA, our genes, our proteins, these encode our history. These are hard evidence. And these organisms, they represent the most of the biomass, most of the life on Earth. Yet we, are only big, uh, we have only scratched the surface in terms of what they're capable of doing and who they are. So, I think we need to band together people from different disciplines within biology to talk about why. Why did life emerge? Why did life make each of its choices during its four billion year history? Why did us eukaryotes, organisms that we can see with the naked eye, become complex? Why did we become such advanced organisms? Or are we advanced to begin with at all? How do we define that? So recontextualizing who we are really, I think, would expand students' minds, not just in the level of biology, but in terms of their own life.